Good evening. The first prisoners have been released under emergency measures to ease overcrowding in Scotland's jails. Around 500 inmates will be let out over the next four weeks. The Justice Secretary insists the move is necessary, but critics claim the plan is shambolic and fear it could lead to more victims. Here's our chief reporter, Sharon Frew. Day one of an emergency measure designed to act as a pressure valve for prisons. Throughout the morning at Berlini, the first of those eligible for early release were processed. Once again, sent home to sober up. Gordon Cochran left with only the clothes he was wearing when he was sentenced to 60 days after a drunken disorderly conviction. So I've done 19, ran automatic, 30 days. So that's the law in Scottish Parliament. 11 days I've been released early. A lot of good doctors and nurses. I recovered from my drunken dream and I feel a lot better, I've got money in my pocket. This move only applies to those serving sentences shorter than four years and does not include anyone convicted of sexual or domestic abuse offences. The Scottish Prison Service say, with the help of intelligence from police and social work, that governors have vetoed anyone who posed an immediate risk to individuals or groups. We're really disappointed at the learning from the last time and during COVID has not gone anywhere. Over 40% of people ended up back in prison within six months anyway. And my concern is, and it was the last time, this creates more victims. Support agencies know the next four weeks will be challenging as they try to cope with an increase in numbers requiring help with benefits, housing and health care. For individuals who we may not be able to support due to the heightened numbers, We'll look at alternative contingency arrangements and that would be a mobile phone and a liberation pack being placed within the person's belongings at that prison for their liberation. But recovery charities say services in the community are already overwhelmed. This is a shambolic solution to a shambolic problem. We have got men and women leaving prisons that we're having to pay hostels for for overnight because there is no accommodation, there is nothing. We've got 32 existing partners across the board in every locality and they have the same fear. They don't have resources, they don't have the funding, they don't have capacity. So I would accept that we are undertaking this measure under an expedited uh, time scale, as a compressed uh, time scale. But it is important to remember that everyone who is being released would have been released in the coming weeks. On the day these plans were announced, Scotland's prison population was over 8,300. This statistic will be closely watched over the coming weeks for signs of a significant reduction. Sharon Frew, STV News. The culture of politics needs to change following the general election betting scandal, according to the Labour leader Sir Keir Starmer. Two Conservative and one Labour candidate have been suspended for betting on the election amid a gambling commission investigation. And the Scottish Conservatives chairman is admitting the row is cutting through to voters. Here's our Westminster correspondent, Paris Gutsianis. Calling an early election was a political gamble for Rishi Sunak, but it's cash bets on the election causing trouble. Scottish Secretary Alistair Jack is admitting winning £100 betting on the election date, but isn't under investigation. Today, he declined to be interviewed. Given that Alistair's um, uh, decision to put a bet on is within the rules, that's why I think we should be looking again at the rules, because clearly public opinion is uh, in a slightly different spot than the present uh, regulatory uh, regime around the um, betting by politicians. Labour has suspended one of its candidates for betting on himself to lose. And Lib Dem leaders Ed Davey and Alex Cole Hamilton admit betting on elections, but within the rules. You can never predict the outcome of elections. The Tories had a piece of information that nobody else had and placed bets on it. We've got big austerity cuts coming down the road from Westminster. We are still in this position where we can't grow the economy because we're not part of the European Union. And politicians, rather than focusing on that, some of them appear to be focusing on themselves and how they can make a few quid. They were partying during the COVID pandemic. They were hiking people's mortgages up because of their economic illiteracy with the Liz Trust mini budget. And now, at a really serious time for our country, they were too busy making money for themselves. These people in Glasgow weren't impressed either. But obviously that's wrong. Like morally, they shouldn't be betting yeah. on their loss or their win. Yeah. I feel like that, should, is that not illegal? It should be illegal? I don't think they should be even considering that, never mind doing it. I think it's all a bit shambolic at the minute. And I think, the British public is a bit peed off with it all. Rishi Sunak and Sir Keir Starmer face each other in the final election debate tonight. It's a safe bet this will come up.
Paris Kritsianis, STV News. Also on the campaign trail today, Alapa launched their manifesto saying taking action on independence is their top priority. The party also unveiled plans to save the Grangemouth oil refinery and safeguard women's rights. Meanwhile, Reform UK were in Grangemouth calling for the scrapping of net zero policies and making the most of oil and gas resources. We should be accelerating that expertise, that growth, selling it all over the world, maximising our opportunity here. And, yeah, as I say, I just think it's, it's completely the wrong way to go. We're increasing our vulnerability to buying in electricity from overseas and there's no logic to it. There's 20% of people who are not voting for the SNP but support independence. That's where Alapa, and for people watching this will be in that category. Don't stay at home, don't vote for the Unionist Labour Party, vote for Alapa, cast your mark for independence. Four people are in hospital after a tenement fire in South Lanarkshire, which forced 22 residents to flee their homes. Emergency services were called to the three-storey terrace on Dean Bray Street in Uddingston this morning. It's understood that two of those taken to hospital were for smoke-related injuries. That's the news. Now, Jamie is here with the sport. STV Sport, sponsored by the C.R. Smith Summer Sale. Good evening. We start with transfer news in the Scottish Premiership and Hibernian have made their second signing of the summer with central defender Warren O'Hara arriving on a three-year deal for the MK Dons. Meanwhile, Hearts have confirmed the arrival of Jan Danda from Ross County also on a three-year deal and Celtic have sold forward Sead Haksabanovic to Malmo in Sweden for an undisclosed fee. Scotland women's head coach Pedro Martinez Losa hopes his players can be inspired by the backing for the men's side in Germany as they look to reach Euro 2025. Scotland play Slovakia and Serbia next month, having picked up 10 points from four matches so far in qualifying. I had goosebumps every time I, I have heard the national anthem, the, the fans uh, and, and, and the energy of the people and hopefully we can manage to qualify to a tournament so we can come back to those feelings with the fans too. It was a title party at a packed out Scotston last night as Glasgow Warriors returned home with the United Rugby Championship trophy. Franco Smith and his players did a lap of honour, thanking fans for their support throughout the season and Fraser Nicol was there. The trophy has made its way from the other side of the world, but now it's arrived at its new home here at Glasgow Warriors. The main stand was packed out to see the cup being lifted before the players made their way round the ground on a lap of honour. It's all come together, mate, and I'm happy the fans, to, hopefully most of the fans can touch the, touch the cup as we bring it around and we all get to soak up the feeling. It's who we do it for, you know, our friends, our families and our, and our fans, you know, so um, yeah, just absolutely pleasant to be here and uh, yeah, thanks for coming out and making a, a great night. Very few fans could make it to South Africa for the final, where the Warriors pulled off a dramatic comeback win over the Bulls. It was phenomenal. It was unbelievable. My heart nearly stopped by that 80th minute. We thought they were, the other team was going to win, but then they got a comeback, and it was really good. I was looking up Google, and I saw half-time we were down, and I thought, right, and in 15 minutes, but I saw we were up, and I was frightened to look before the end. The neighbours thought we'd gone mental, because I think they were rugby supporters, and we just went through the roof. Some supporters remember the last title win in 2015. For others, it's their first. We've now got a trophy, um, and the trophy needs to get out. It needs to be in the schools, it needs to be in the clubs, it needs to be inspiring the next generation to pick the ball up. But we've got a, a bunch of guys who, rightly so, are going to be heroes. Uh, and we need to make as much noise about it as possible. This team certainly hoped to create more success in coming seasons, but for now, they're soaking up this big victory and the chance to enjoy it with their biggest fans. Fraser Nicol, STV Sport at Scotsland Stadium. Great memories for the Warriors fans, but that's all the sport for this evening. STV Sport, sponsored by the CR Smith Summer Sale. Phillips, next up with the weather forecast. Light winds rolling in from the west. 
will be joined by some very welcomed ice creams. TUI sponsors STV Weather. Hello and a very good evening to you. Well, over the next couple of days, things are remaining changeable and unsettled, all thanks to this deep area of low pressure dominating our weather. It will bring with it unseasonably strong winds and heavy rainfall, leading to quite a bit of travel disruption probably throughout tomorrow. Back to just now, a lot going on tonight. We're seeing showers breaking out, moving northwards. Some of these are quite heavy at times, could hear the odd rumble of thunder. We're seeing the return of that low cloud mist and murk around eastern coastal parts of the North Sea. And we've got a frontal system moving in from the west. That's bringing with it thicker cloud and those strengthening winds. So with the wind, the rain and the cloud, a mild night to come. Temperatures in some spots not dropping lower than 12 degrees Celsius. So looking ahead to tomorrow morning, first thing, those showers will clear eastwards. For a brief time around dawn, we will see some drier and brighter conditions then as that low pressure moves in from the west, it pushes in this band of rain. That rain will become fairly widespread by afternoon and the winds will continue to strengthen, widely seeing gusts of up to 40 miles per hour and highs of 17 Celsius. Bye-bye. TUI sponsors STV Weather. That's us tonight. Our nibs will be back with me at 6 o'clock tomorrow. From all of us, thank you for watching. Enjoy the rest of your evening.